Hey, this is Arsene from Rambling Regan, just giving you an update on all the things that I'm working on so far. Um, I'm leaving the Indiegogo campaign thing for last, as that's going to take me the longest. For those who follow me on Twitter, you'll be noticing that I've been posting when I've been adding the episodes 1 through 11 of the Final Stage podcast on its own website. I think I've mentioned this before, and if I haven't, um, I bought a new website to house all of the episodes for the podcast. I really should have done it last year, but I didn't because I wasn't sure how long that was going to last, but it's actually done pretty good. So I'm putting all of those there, and from this point forward, I'm going to be putting whatever new episodes just on that website and just probably make a small note on mine uh, to check it there. But I'm slowly but surely moving them over. I'm about halfway, three quarters of the way, and by the time the next uh, podcast is up, I should have um, all 11 up. So go check that out when you get a chance. Um, I've also finally got the uh, State of Sasuke vlogs that I've been working on, the two interviews. I got the one from Mitsuki up the other week, and then last week was uh, Rachel and June. The second one was uh, a visual Skype call. I was trying to see which one I liked better between the two, and it turned out to be great either way because each one was uniquely different, which is what I like. <laughs> And um, I like doing those, so I'll see if I'll find any more uh, people that are interested in doing those. It's sort of like a half interview, half, you know, hey, let's talk about uh, Ninja Warrior or Sasuke, whichever is the one you saw first. And, you know, the whole point of those is just to see from a fan perspective um, what they can do to help the show, raise awareness, so people know that the show is still going on very well in 2016. In fact, the application for Sasuke 32 is quickly approaching. It is on April 8th, and as of this recording, it's about 10 days away. So it's it's coming up pretty fast. And then after that uh, will be the two um, auditions, uh, one in Osaka and one in Tokyo. Um, those have not been announced yet. I would assume it would be shortly after. If we were going by history, it should be like really shortly after. And then after that, it'll be the wait to figure out when uh, Sasuke 32 is taping and then airing. And then all of that should be uh, before the Olympics. So yeah, looking forward to that. As for projects that I'm still working on, I have to uh, actually finish a blog on the National Ninja League. I got a, a couple of blogs up. Um, usually, I think it was what, within 24 hours of the actual event. Um, William did a awesome job on his website. Um, the All of the runs from both days are up there and he put a timer and everything. All of those years working on uh, Mind of a Wanderer, this kid, I was an awesome thing. So um, I'll definitely put on the uh, limp description to all of those videos. I mean, it, they're great. Just the amount of footage that he managed to get. Um, with the exception of just one interview. Oh, <laughs> but he did a fantastic job. And so I'll, I'll plug the living heck out of all the stuff that he did. So definitely uh, look forward to that. Um, I'll have my own small one. And like I mentioned before, it was always meant to be small anyway. I'll get those up um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. And then finally, I'll finish working on getting the uh, videos of uh, last year's trip. If everybody remembers me complaining about the video quality of those, um, and that led me to uh, change how I'm doing the Indiegogo, where I added the cost of the upgrades of the cameras. Um, I did go ahead and get one of the cameras. Um, it's actually, I has, it hasn't arrived yet, I just got it. And I'm glad I did because it was on sale and now it's not. So, woo! Great for minus $250 off. So um, I'm being, of course, completely open on this because it is included in part of the price of the of the campaign. I ended up getting a Panasonic Lumix G7. Just be, everybody just calls it a G7. Um, it's basically entry level on the 4K side. Um, it's also really cheap <laughs> for what that sucker does. So I wanted to try to future proof this as, as much as possible and give me a lot of options with that camera. And regardless of what happens with the with the uh, campaign, because right now it has a slow start, just like it was last year. <laughs> um, but in the case that um, I don't end up raising enough, enough money, I'll just eat the cost. It'll take me at least a year to pay for it. But um, 
you know, that's that's something that had to happen no matter what because I'm I'm tired of complaining of my workhorse, my wonderful Sony Handycam that that needs to be retired. So I just went ahead and got that. Um, jury's still out on whether or not I'm going to have enough money to get the DSLR as well. Because for people to remember, um, I go with my husband and we work as a team. So whether he's hanging on to the camera and I'm hanging on to the video camera or vice versa. Um, it turned out basically how we ended up doing it in Sasuke was I had my iPhone and he had the video camera and um at, i'm running around like a you know chicken with his head cut off <laughs> running around taking pictures and he's taking videos of me doing that and and just videos of other things as well and um on day two were the third and fourth stages we ended up where i i just kept my phone and he switched over to uh, Jean's DSLR, and that was the introduction of, oh, this is what a real camera looks like. <laughs> and that was a vastly different experience, and the majority of my really, really good photos came from uh, that DSLR, and um, he does much better with it than I do. It's something that I'm planning to learn on working on, but I'm more on the video side, but that's, that's the direction that I went ahead, so, regardless of whether or not I end up raising enough money for all of that that's what I wanted to do so yep so that's in the mail and it's on its way okay also March was actually my eight year anniversary so yes Rambling Regan is eight years old <laughs> how did we get here so yeah that was March 2008 good lord <laughs> was, yikes just oh wow it, it's been a long time and a lot has changed from then and now so I'm I'm happy you know I'm happy you guys are still here I mean the, the site is still going strong the um, the YouTube is gonna take a while to develop but you know I admit it and never really took time to really develop that and hopefully you know that's my goal for 2016 to start working on those and um, get over my stage fright and just go with it you know that's Everybody knows what I look like now, so it's not this, ooh, uh, yeah, everybody knows what I look like now, so <laughs> just, all right, just move on and go with it. So let's see what 2016 comes up with. Okay, I've gotten a lot of questions about this. Right now, I am sitting a 14%. So people were asking me, especially since this is a flexible campaign, what would happen if I don't hit the 5,000 and what's going to happen to the money? So first things first, um, I'm assured that by one way or the other, um, my flight is taken care of. Um, I probably have to finagle some of that and probably put my own money through it. Uh, either way, that is off the table as it was last year. So I'm going to Japan one way or the other. <laughs> so this is how that works out. So the trip itself would not be canceled but what happens while I'm there will be severely changed. So the way I will do it is uh, go by priority. Uh, what has to go first, first is what I promised on the Indiegogo. So if someone paid for a perk, they get the perk. So th that's a direct order. So perks are first, and then of course, a place to stay. So, you know, hotel or, you know, <laughs> Ryokan, whatever it is that I, that I can find a place as close to Midoriyama as possible. Um, then after that would be transportation, um, air transportation, because I was planning to uh, take some of that um, to help pay, because as opposed to last year where the entirety of the, of the airfare was uh, frequent flyer miles, um, they've done a lot of changes to frequent flyer miles, so it's a little bit different how this works, and it is a different person that's, that's covering it. So, um, you know, Don and I were planning to work on trying to get, you know, upgrades and stuff like that because flying in coach for 20 hours is really, really painful, especially 13 of them in a row in one seat with half the chair digging into you because, oh my God, airlines, what the hell are you doing to your chairs? So worst case, I will have to try to find different airlines that actually have seats for normal people or at least bigger people because y'all know what I look like. <laughs> So either way, so that was the direction. So I'm basically going in order. And then of course, if I don't have enough, um, we'll eat the camera ourselves. You know, I have to upgrade that camera no matter what. 
So that's basically in the order that I'm going through. Um, so I start from the top, work on the things that have to be covered, and then after that, I guess finance the rest. Um, not my ideal situation, but I'll make do with what happens. Uh, my hope is that in the next three weeks, um, uh, people would uh, end up getting like t-shirts and stuff like that. I have been assured that a few people are waiting like towards the end or you know when they get their tax refund or at the end of the month you know for various reasons um, that was also the risk that I took of having a longer campaign because this was a little longer um, I wasn't sure if I was gonna get the whole thing anyway so I put it at 40 days and now I'm thinking it was probably a mistake at the same time it might not be because whether somebody had it at the end of of March or not was irrelevant how short or long my campaign would have been so it kind of doesn't matter it just it just is what it is so that's the reality of the situation so for those who are worried you know where the money's gonna go I will itemize it um, I believe I did it last year individually with each person that that asked for it um, but yeah and I'm completely in front of where that money's gonna go so I wanted to take the time to uh, show you what these things look like um, the Sasuke t-shirts change every year and so I am not selling this one. Oh my god uh, This is actually the first Sasuke shirt I've ever gotten. Okay, so this is from Sasuke 21 if you can see some of the OG graphics <laughs> I Love this shirt. It's actually a little small on me So whenever I wear it I have to put another shirt over it, but yeah the, each one is uniquely different so the first one, you know, that I've ever gotten, that's what it looks like. And um, some people are like, did you make that? I'm like, no, this is what the actual tournament shirt looked like. And there were four different variations of that. Um, they had it just with the words in the front. Um, the, I think it was the following year that they had all the names in the back of the people that have gotten furthest. It, 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 they got very interesting with them. And then up next is the one from last year. Um, there are a couple variations of this. There's the white, the pure white shirt with the gold or silver lettering. And then there's the pure black shirt with gold or silver lettering. This is a stretchy shirt. So um, this was also the largest size that's available. Um, the double L's. Um, something that I've learned. So if anybody knows what I look like, um, or actually there's several people that now have them so you can see the difference between the Japanese sizes and uh, the Western sizes because even Europe has their own different sizes um, from what I understand they're closer to the Japanese size I, I can't confirm that but either way the shirts that I always get are the largest that's available because most of the time adults um, are the ones that are buying these if there are uh, people that are interested in getting them from this year, you can let me know if you want a smaller size. I'll I'll make sure and get a smaller size. So, but in general, my my initial thing is to get the largest size available because those are the first ones that go. So, what I still have available of last year's shirt is one of those uh, double L's with the silver lettering. I ended up getting the gold lettering because that's just something that I liked. Um, so the silver lettering is what's still left and I still have one of those. And then you can pardon the crunching in the background as I'm reading these. Uh, the next one, I believe, let me see if last year was 2015. 2014 was the shirt that Morimoto was wearing um, during Sasuke 31. So I believe this is either Sasuke 28 or 29. I'm trying to remember. Um, my friend ended up helping me get uh, a couple extra shirts for fundraising, basically looking forward to this year. And um, again, these are double L's. Yeah, these are double L's. And I'm trying to remember which shirt, I think it was 28 or 29, but these were the only ones that were available. They're not on the site anymore, on the TBSI site, so I can't confirm which year it was. Um, but yeah, these are the last two and they're both the largest size available. So once these are gone, these are gone and the, you can't, they don't make these anymore. So this is what the towel was for 2015. Um, personally, I don't like this one. <laughs> I like the old one that I don't own that one. It was just basically just the word Sasuke of a black background with green words. Um, and this one was just 
green words on a green background, so it really mixes together. But again, each year is a different design. So I have no idea what this year is going to look like by any like at all. We'll, we'll find out literally the day we arrive and they lift the tarp so people can see what the heck they look like. <laughs> I was literally a sport going, what do they look like? How much are they? And oh my god, let me get them before they sell out. Because the only thing that ends up in that TBSI store are the overruns. They just print a certain amount and then that's it. I just the idea boggles me that how can they not print more when people want them it just makes no sense to me but again that's my mentality and then finally the keychain um i was tempted to figure out if i should lower this or not this was actually not cheap um i think i paid something like 20 dollars for this maybe 15 i'm trying to remember if it was 15 or 20 um so that's why i had it priced so high it was never on the website either. There were three of these keychains, and the three keychains comprised one third of the list of a hundred. So um, the one that I'm staring at now, I believe was the middle set. So if it's one third, you're looking at the mid thirties to mid sixties. Um, I had all three of them, uh, one I gave away, one I'm keeping because it has Jean's name on it and Jean was the reason why I ended up <laughs> going to Japan in the first place. And then so I'm giving away the one that's in the middle. And um, so anybody that has seen the list of the run order, these are just the names of the people that were in that middle pack. So if interested in that, I have one. I've never opened the package, so exactly what you see is exactly what you get. And then the photos. Uh, the photos that I have, because I use Shutterfly a lot, like that's how I got the book. And I'll actually do a video just on the book because I've gotten an obscene amount of questions just on that. And so, um. I'm very much a like an autograph type person or I'll take photos of the people as opposed to like selfies with them or anything like that. So what I did was um, I ended up creating an autograph book which apparently blew their minds because they've never seen anything like that before and I've gotten a lot of questions about that and I think I've mentioned that before. So I ended up making a book that had um, like a wide range of competitors, some that were that I knew were gonna be there and some that I just like. And so um, I put various photos of, you know, um, across I think it was like 20 pages that I think the book had and um, took that with me to Japan and I had them sign it because again that's my memory book. So <laughs> while everybody else had taken their um, uh, their pictures like because I went and took, um, ended up taking a whole bunch of pictures with me to Japan to have signed. That was my book. So I use that company a lot because digital photos are only good when, at least for me, when I have them right in front of me tactile. What I did last year was I ended up getting, I just printed a, a bunch of different uh, pictures. A lot of the ones that had uh, said that they were planning to participate and then others that I was hoping to get signed and then a whole bunch of blanks like I had just put like Sasuke Rising the the actual logo and um it, I ended up getting one you know signed by Shingo which was great you know and then and I'm happy because uh when the uh, ones for Shinya didn't work out I at least uh had that replaced with Shingo which is great because Emily loves me now <laughs> you know but you know crap happens you know it's even with Shinya what happened last year where he ended up getting hurt right before his run and and that happens when you're trying to secure um, autographs in the middle of a tournament and each competitor works differently. So each competitor could be like, hey, I'll take photos and whatever. And the other ones go, please don't touch me because I, I, I'm about to throw up because I'm so nervous. <laughs> you know, so you had the gamut of it. it. It happens with every sporting event. So the way I had the photo set up again this year is identical where I'm going to take a bunch of them with me in hopes that I can get them um, signed and then um, putting on the list the ones that said that they absolutely will. Um, once I'm there, usually they're all totally cool with it, but I wanna make sure before I start promising a whole bunch of people and people are actually paying money. So that's why it, the that section with the photos is sort of like iffy for that reason. You know, I wanna make sure that I under promise but over deliver 
but yeah, I'm planning to take a whole bunch of photos with me, um, have them signed by as many people as possible, and bring back as many as I can. Um, but in general, the, the whole point is, you know, as a fundraiser. And last year I ended up having where somebody paid for one, but they ended up getting like three or four, you know, depending on, you know, what I had left and out of the ones that were signed. And then I just gave away the extras of the ones that I had extra left, even if they weren't signed. I'm hoping to get more signed this year now that people are used to it. Because once I got there, they're like, oh my God, there's a photo of me. This is great. And I'm like, it, you know, it was just weird for me. I've never seen anything like that. So again, hopefully that at least answers some of your questions. If you have any more, you're, you know, concerned about certain things. Um, if you have any other ideas, you know, I've, I've had people were like, hey, you know, I don't want to donate money, but if you're upgrading stuff and using Amazon, I can give gift certificates. I mean, I've heard everything so far. So if you're interested in, in stuff like that, just let me know. You know, I appreciate the support in general and the fact that people have been, you know, sharing through social media. It's like, it's just, it's a process when you're doing crowdfunding and it's just extremely nerve wracking. For the next three weeks, I probably won't sleep. <laughs> That's how it was last year. And it seems to be just the same this year. So my hope at least is that this video helps um, in, you know, making a decision, you know, try to you know, post this on your own Facebook, share with others. Um, be courteous, of course, because whenever you put a link to a crowdfund, people treat them a little bit differently. And I can understand the, the whole promotion thing and whatever where um, they frown upon that. So I appreciate your support. Just make sure you don't get yourself in trouble trying to promote it. <laughs> if I don't get up to the full 5,000 while I have the, the opportunity to get uh, the money regardless if I got to the goal or not. I believe the fee is higher. It goes from 5% to 9% just for Indiegogo. So I was also putting a cushion in there to make sure that, you know, I didn't lose a huge chunk to fees and then I'm back to the same, you know, problem that I was before. So again, thank you for your time and sorry for the really, really long vlog. <laughs> but I think this needed to be, you know, discussed as thoroughly as possible. So again, thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.